All right, all right. God bless each and every one of you out there in Christ Jesus. This is your brother Ron, and I'm back at you again with another video by the living grace of God. And so we are ultimately talking about the reality of the fact that God actually sets authorities. He sets up authorities in lands all throughout the world. Uh, God wants the people of God to rise up with power, to rise up with the authority and the grace and the glory uh, and the identity that God has given them. And so this is something very valuable because God is looking to reconcile people back to the God that loves them. God is always seeking to return the people back to their first love, back to the uh, works, back to the conduct, back to the renewed identity, the reviving of his people from dead bones, from the dead state, from the foreign state, from false religion, from uh, all sorts of characteristics and ways that are not beneficial uh, towards their eternal habitation with God. God wants them to be a type of way. He wants uh, his people to resemble him. And so that resemblance is in character. Um, it's in uh, how you look in the sense that he doesn't just change you on the inside. That change actually spills over to the changing of who you are on the outside. It's a whole, a holistic transformation because God wants us to know the reality of, of the depths of change, the depths of transformation, the depths of perfection that he wants to manifest through us. It doesn't mean that we're not going to make mistakes, but it does mean that we're going to live a lifestyle that is wholly dedicated to him, that is full of uh, the righteousness and truth that God wants to perpetually be a manifestation of his fragrance on you. And so this is very important. So God is giving out power. He is giving out grace. He is uh, renewing identity. He is uh, uh, designing people. He is raising up judges. He is uh, ensuring that there is transformation towards the solidifying of kingship and priests uh, that he is maturing uh, in the world. And so we, we are people that are called by many names because our God is called by many names. Our God, the, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, uh, the, the God uh, who is, as the word calls, the Lord of hosts. I remember the first time Jesus manifested himself to me in a dream that's how he manifested himself as a front runner of a great army that was on the verge of attacking a demonic army and so the lord is in battle he is a uh, 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 a lord of armies a a the lord of hosts and he is fighting for the hearts of man he is fighting for the the, the minds. He is fighting to uh, remove the blindfolds, to uh, cause people to no longer be blind uh, at the works of the demonic world and what the demonic world is doing to keep people uh, in shackles and in bondage to the sinful conditions of um, the world or uh, false religion and the, the corruption of certain levels of re religiosity that is not beneficial for the perfection of the saints. And so God is uh, bringing a, 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 a prompting, a unction, a development by his spirit that is uh, ultimately bringing forth 
the true design of his sons and his daughters in the earth. And so there is a power, a glory that is being placed on the people of God. And so, uh, so we have uh, many different uh, individuals who profess Jesus Christ, who profess uh, the Lord of righteousness. You know, the, the word of God says in Jeremiah 23, uh, the, the Lord, our righteousness, uh, uh, Jehovah Shekinu, uh, the one who um, is righteous because of his acts of righteousness um, and because of his heart of righteousness. He, he is ever uh, putting on levels of his righteousness on his people uh, so that his people can uh, more and more transform into the levels of his righteousness that we ought to be exemplifying in our conduct as people of God, uh, as, as saints of light, because he is the uh, light of the world and he's transferred that light into the bodies of his servants and now there is a glow there is a uh, a manifestation of great glory that is stemming from the inside going outward and so the kingdom of darkness recognizes that in the spirit they know and so the demons know that the sons and daughters of God have authority from God, that, that there are authorities set in the land who have light in them, who have a pulsating glory on them, who have power on them to do many things. The word of God tells us in Mark, in Mark chapter 16 uh, that these signs shall follow them that believe. Uh, they shall cast out devils. They shall speak in new tongues. They shall, uh, you know, uh, lay hands on the sick and the sick will recover. Uh, there are supernatural things uh, that are going to happen because of the sons and daughters of God. The dead will be raised back to life. And so this is important for us to know and for us to believe because there are layers of unbelief that we get from the world, that we get from the cultures, that we get from uh, the condition of societies, modern societies. And <clears throat> so even if you're a Christian, there, there needs to be the steadfast uh, pursuit for Jesus because transformation requires really soaking in the Lord and allowing him to wash you with his uh, fragrances so that you can be sanctified and purified from the unbelief, from the corruption of the world, so you can actually begin to uh, respond with the authority, the identity, and the power that God wants you to yield, for that God wants you to um, showcase, that he wants you to present. Uh, because one of the things that I was saying earlier is that because Jesus is a man of war, because Jesus is the Lord of hosts, there is also a a reality that we are soldiers in Christ, that we are people who are warring against the, the world of the demonic, the world of darkness. And so the word, well, the word of God tells us that we wrestle not against flesh and blood, not against people, but against powers, against uh, uh, principalities, against spiritual wickedness in high places, uh, uh, rulers of the darkness of this world. So we know that unclean spirits and all sorts of entities uh, in the demonic are responsible for the disarray, for the corruption, for the confusion, for the hatred, for the, the lack of love, for the, uh, the lack of truth, for 
uh, all of the things that want to ultimately hinder the direction of the the, of the advancement of the kingdom of God. But God wants people that are soaked in his glory so that they can be able to confront the confusion, confront the corruption. So he's giving out power to select people so that they can rise up in the lands in which they dwell and become the voices of God to uh, speak against the perpetual corruption and in the same breath edify the people of God towards strengthening them in the very identity that God has positioned them to uh, grow in and mature in. And so there ought to be the clarity of God in the atmosphere. There ought to be the manifestation of the rightly dividing of the word of truth, the bringing of the reality of what God is actually doing in the land, uh, not the false prophecy that we see in this modern day, not the speaking from one's heart without, re it, without any real unction or manifestation or information or actual promptings uh, that have clarity within them that showcase what God is actually doing, what God is actually saying. Uh, and, and so we know that one of the ways that we know, even in the Old Testament, how it says, if the words of a prophet don't come to pass, then the prophet is a false prophet. But when you have perpetual evidence of the fact that the words, the spoken words, the specific direction, the, the exhortation of people who are committed to Jesus uh, speak in such a way and communicate things that actually manifest in the physical, that actually in a detailed way come to pass, God is demonstrating that there is power that resides in people in a land. God wants to show that there are people that he has committed, entrusted secrets and levels of comprehension too, so that they can be the voice of righteousness, the voice that communicates what God is saying, because God, again, we are talking about the reality of reconciliation. The fact that God wants to draw his people back to himself. He wants the people to return to their first love because in the land, there is much corruption. There is much sin, much idolatry, much pollution, much hatred, and, and the tossing of of the tossing to and fro by every wind of doctrine, the, the fact that there's a lack of peace uh, that, that manifests because things are being spoken that are not from God. Things are being declared that are not breathed by the God of breath, the God of all creation. And so we as sons and daughters of God have to not just be sensitive to the voice of God, but also know that there are certain people that God has risen up in a land with power that have the, the very truth, the very instructions, the very reality of what God is planting, what God is planning to do. God is planning to cause things to manifest, and he does not want the people of God to necessarily be surprised. The Bible says that God doesn't do anything in the land, in the world, uh, in the nations, unless he uh, forewarns, unless he uh, prompt, uh, gives this unction, gives uh, uh knowledge in advance of what he plans to do uh, in an area. And so he speaks, he communicates, he 
uh, ensures that he puts words in specific people that he has uh, given power or knowledge or his word to. And so we must understand that there's a reason why all throughout the Bible, there is the need for unity. There's the need for certain people to be together uh, because if not, there is going to be the manifestation of all sorts of confusion, of corruption, of just sin and bad things. Why? Because uh, there is no uh, unity that brings about the, the availability, availability to extract from vessels that are united what God wants to do in a particular land, in, in a particular land and in a particular time. So people are getting caught off guard, not understanding. They're being told at the last minute what's going to happen. And they don't have time to prepare themselves, prepare their hearts, prepare their minds. When God is saying things in advance, months in advance, uh, years in advance, what's going to happen? And he wants to prepare the hearts of the people to know how to deal, how to uh, prepare themselves, how to respond as to ensure that they are in position to benefit from what God is doing rather than losing, rather than uh, being troubled, rather than being hindered, rather than being uh, a person who, who now is uh, shamed or, or uh, in a condition of uh, of condemnation or corruption. God wants for us to take advantage based off the prior instruction. So we don't have to deal with sickness and uh, death and, and pollution. We don't have to deal with the uh, corruption of the media and we don't have to deal with the fake news. We don't have to, uh, uh, you know, uh, because we don't know, we, we don't have to now be a victim, a casualty of the onslaught of what is to come. And we can be in a position of safety. We can be in a position of fearlessness, of, of truth, of, of sobriety, of calm. Uh, behavior, the peace of the Lord that surpasses all understanding, that is able to guard, uh, uh, secure, protect our hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. God wants you to be a son and daughter, son or daughter of peace, the peace of the Lord. He wants that to be something that you abide in. Why? Because you are operating in the righteousness, the truth. You are forward, uh, you are uh, uh, going in the direction of the knowledge of God, of what God is revealing to you, uh, or you have access to someone who has the future on their tongue, who has uh, levels of grace or uh, uh, power that they uh, uh, have been given of God. The Bible says, uh, freely you have uh, been given, so freely you give. And so uh, it w this is why the enemy is working uh, to... Uh, cause disunity, to cause separation, to cause all sorts of, of, of breaking of covenants because he does not want the power or, or the strength and, and the, uh, the glory that comes from unity. Even the enemy knows that. Uh, when we look at stories like uh, back in the book of Genesis, early in the book of Genesis with the Tower of Babel and God saying that there would be nothing that would uh, be restricted from these people as they build, uh, as, as they builded um, this uh, Tower of Babel. And, and uh, so God understands unity 
you know, the Word of God uh, says in Psalms 133, you know, how good and how pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. So there is a unity that the sons and daughters of God love, but that the kingdom of darkness hates. Even the kingdom of darkness benefits on certain levels of unity, even in their kingdom, uh, because they know that they can operate unless they have some measure of unity. So uh, we as sons and daughters of God know that God is forging real unity, real peace, but th it requires transformation. It requires certain levels of devotion individually that uh, causes levels of transformation towards the outward unity. And so God is doing that. And so God is raising up people of power. And people may say, well, you know, spiritual gifts or power, you know, um, there is levels of it. Uh, you know, for example, the word of God says the, the gifts and callings are without repentance. But we're not just talking about that level of power. We're talking about the response power that God also does in the sense that he raises up judges. He raises up individuals with power because of a situation, because of corruption, because of ungodliness, because of the need for people to be in a land to bring about the glory of God, the righteousness of God, the truth of God, the holiness of God. Because of the need for that and the returning of the people back to their first love, because of the need for that, God will raise up power in response to evil, in response to corruption. God will raise up power. God will. And so this power is not necessarily the type of power uh, that uh, we can, you know, belittle because uh, the gifts and callings are without repentance. We're talking about the fact that God wants a pure people. He wants a righteous people. So he will do all sorts of things. One example that we can uh, talk about um, is uh, 1 Kings chapter 22. We, we know that um, there is uh, two kings mentioned here. Uh, you have the 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 king of the north, Ahab, and you have the king of the south, Jehoshaphat, that's mentioned. And so what happens is, you know, uh, they ultimately want to war. Ahab wants to war against the uh, Syrian um, army, the, the uh, he, he wants uh, Remeth Gilead. He, he wants that territory. Uh, and so while Jehoshaphat is uh, with uh, Ahab, uh, Jehoshaphat being a good king, a, a king who followed the ways of the Lord. And so that's a prerequisite that God wants, you know, this this uh, righteousness, this holiness, this uh, listening to com the commandments of the Lord, the obeying of what God tells you to do, obeying of what God shows you. So, so Jehoshaphat is in uh, this relationship. Now, God doesn't necessarily like, God doesn't like this relationship in reference to Jehoshaphat and Ahab. But Jehoshaphat, you know, of course, uh, uh, he and uh, Ahab insist on this relationship and they are connected, but they're not connected uh, based off uh, the righteousness of God. They're not, they're not uh, connected based off both of them living lifestyles of righteousness and being obedient to the God of Israel. So the northern king, um, King Ahab, uh, is unrighteous. His lifestyle is not in representation uh, of 
the ways of God. So no, so now we know that there are certain things that he does traditionally that uh, you know kind of shows that he is connected to the God of Israel. But then you have uh, the uh, Judah. You have the uh, king of Judah. And Jehoshaphat, the king of Judah, he lives a lifestyle of righteousness. He uh, follows the commandments of the Lord. He, he does things. His lifestyle mimics or resembles that of someone who is faithful to the God of Israel. And so in this modern day, one of the things that people, um, one of the things that hinder uh, Christians is the reality that they may know the Bible, they may, they may know or, or at least to a degree know aspects of the word of God. They may uh, learn the stories within the Bible. They may uh, be able to quote the scripture. Uh, they may be able to uh, do religious acts, but the reality is that one of the things that God honors is the living of the Bible, the living of the word of God. And so people with their lives can have aspects of their lives that don't match the word of God. And so they can have the head knowledge, but they may not have the heart knowledge and experience. They may not have the conformity of their lifestyle that should represent the leading of the Spirit of God. So, so you, you, you'll see in this modern world um, a lot of you know, um, activity to where the enemy is causing people um, to entertain the... Um, barrage of corrupt entertainment of this world or you, you'll have people that um, because of the self-focus and selfishness of this modern day you have people that can't stay in healthy relationships in reference to husbands and wives or or parents and children uh, you have a inability to walk in the level of maturity and holiness and wisdom, because it takes wisdom, wisdom to be able to uh, walk in a type of unity, walk in a type of manifested glory on you that protects the relationships that you want protected. So you're going to have people that um, are... Um, you know, married for two or three years and then decide to get a divorce, you know, um, you know, for selfish reasons. You, you know, you're going to have people that um, can't get it right. They, they uh, And we're not saying that there's no grace for that. Of course there is, but we ought to know the difference between us being people that want to uh, actually live what the word of God says or people uh, versus the people that want that, that because of the entertaining of the weaknesses, the, the, the lack of application of the power, lack of application of the wisdom, lack of application of what the word of God says in reference to the identity that the word of God is painting, we ultimately allow our lives to go down a direction that is not according to the ways of God. We we are not controlled in reference to our emotions. So husbands are, are uh, treating their wives like children and wives are treating their husbands like uh, children, parent, um, child relationships in reference to marriage. You have you know, the Jezebel spirit at work, you have the Ahab spirit at work, you have uh, all sorts of generational curses that are not being confronted, you have uh, anger and all manner of 
of, of hidden things of dishonesty and corruption, manipulation of scripture. Uh, you have individuals that are, uh, 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 you know, pretending that they're holy, but yet they are speaking all manner of evil to their children, to their wives, to their brothers, to their sisters. They are living very double-minded ways. It's obvious at times. Uh, and, and they may not see it that way. And so sometimes you can be given over to that heart set, that mindset. And you never really come to the knowledge of the truth in reference to a holistic transformation that then begins to enable you to actually live all that the Bible is declaring. Again, not to say that you don't make a, a mistake or here or there, but the reality is we have to live a lifestyle that begins to showcase and prove that the power of God is with us to actually transform and to live out the identity that God says is possible according to his word. The word of God says, as obedient children, not fashion yourselves according to your former lusts, but as he has... Uh, um, um, uh, as obedient children, not fashioning yourself according to your former lust in your ignorance, but as he has, as he uh, who has called you is holy, so be ye holy in all manner of conversation. So God is wanting this level of transformation onto holiness that God is producing in the sons of God who know that. Uh, they can't be conformed to the world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of the living God. And so God is ensuring that he is placing power in us, in the sons and daughters of righteousness, of truth, of holiness, so that we can uh, understand that the ways of the world, the ways of the generational curses, the ways of foreign perspectives and identities, uh, the ways of corrupt levels of religiosity and uh, uh, pollution, uh, double-minded in, in, in hypocrisy, uh, doesn't have to be named of us. The Word of God says that. Let not these things be named of you. And so God uh, so we don't have to worry about the rumors and the corruption that we don't have to worry about things that people say but have no proof of. We simply live out what God is empowering us to live out. And if we do make a mistake, God uh, says that we have an advocate with the Father. We have an advocate. We have someone that's going to help us to repent and to then walk in a way that is pleasing to God. So God desires that. So now the story here uh, concerning Ahab and uh, Jehoshaphat. So God ultimately doesn't like this specific relationship uh, because of the lifestyles that are completely different. Uh, even though Ahab has certain levels of religiousness that he operates in. But Jehoshaphat has more of a lifestyle that God is pleased with. He has much of his life is transformed. Uh, and But this relationship is a snare to him between uh, uh, Jehoshaphat and Ahab. And so so God uh, wants to take Ahab and his family off of the map. He wants to get rid of them. Uh, they had already done a great evil uh, trespass in reference to killing an innocent man, Naboth. They had already done that, and that was something that was not pleasing to God. God sent Elijah to speak that curse uh, over him. Uh, and uh, that at that point was going to begin to manifest. Uh, there was modifications to it because of the levels of 
uh, certain um, small levels of repentance that had happened on Ahab's part, but it still was going to manifest because of all of the sins that Ahab was guilty of. He was guilty of a pattern, a way, a mindset. He was guilty of uh, perpetual sins, hidden things of dishonesty. He was uh, guilty of many things that God was addressing, but it was the uh, killing of the innocent man that was what uh, uh, was that what spilled the 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 glass it is what um um it was what ultimately broke the camel's back it, it's what um brought forth okay so this is uh, enough you know god does say things are enough with sodom and gomorrah god said that was enough and so he brought forth that level of judgment uh, you, know, uh, you know, there's other situations with King Herod, you know, uh, he listened to the people and how the people uh, lifted, lifted him up and made him seem like a god. And so God had to strike Herod right there. Um, other examples in the Bible where God says, oh, that's enough, you know, um, you have the, the Noah's flood and the the wickedness that was going on in the world and how God, you know, uh, began to make this plan and to use Noah to restart what uh, God wanted to be done in levels of righteousness uh, as to not provoke him, not to provoke his wrath. And so... So, so we see that God does that. And so, uh, so with this story, one of the things that we want to pull out is, so in this situation with Ahab and uh, Je uh, with Jehoshaphat, uh, God doesn't like their union, but uh, there is um, a reality of God uh, still saving Jehoshaphat though he's going to bring uh, judgment upon Ahab. And so one of the things that happens here that is a constant theme throughout the Bible. There's a constant theme uh, of how God works. And so what we see here is that they need counsel. They need counsel from, they need divine counsel so that they can know whether they should go up to Remeth Gilead uh, and war uh, against the Syrians or not. They want counsel. They need divine counsel. They need instruction. They need to know uh, in advance that if they go, they're going to win. They don't want to, they're trying to count the costs. And so what happens is they call for prophets. They call for people who are supposed to have divine connection with God. And so there are these 400 prophets uh, and these 400 prophets are prophesying that they're gonna go up to Remeth Gilead and God's going to deliver Remeth Gilead, going to deliver uh, that territory, going to deliver the king, uh, the, the army of Syria, Syria into their hands. They think they're going to win. And so these 400, so we have 400 unanimous uh, communications from these prophets that say this is going to happen. So that's pretty that, that's pretty significant. 400 people saying the same thing. So that, it, it gives you a level of encouragement. It gives you a level of, you know, there's a, a very high, a high likely, a high likelihood that this is going to work out for our good. So Jehoshaphat, though, he is a man of righteousness. 
And he asks, even though he hears the 400 prophets that, sp that speak and communicate unanimously that uh, if Jehoshaphat and his army and uh, Ahab and his army go up together to Remeth Gilead to fight the Syrians, that they're going to win. So he's, uh, he hears that, but he has something in him that says, you know what, is there a prophet from the Lord? Here is there a prophet who is known to be dedicated to the God of Israel that is not flirting between multiple gods? You know, in those days, in our day, there is what we call polytheism. Many gods, multiple gods, polytheism, the worshiping of many gods, polytheism. So Jehoshaphat knows that these people are polytheists. He knows that they uh, they they um, listen to this God and they uh, um, give sacrifices to this God. They give sacrifices to this God. They give sacrifices to this God. They entertain uh, corruption. And, and so he doesn't necessarily put them out, but he uh, says, is there a prophet from the Lord? Is there a prophet who only hears from the God of our country, the God of Israel, the God who uh, ultimately uh, raised up uh, the identity of our nation, uh, the, the God who ultimately gave birth through Abraham of what we know is true. And so what happens is there is this prophet named uh, Micaiah, this prophet named Micaiah that is uh, referenced by Ahab. He's referenced, he's, refer he's referencing Micaiah and he's saying, but he's also saying about Micaiah that Micaiah doesn't prophesy anything good about Ahab. Every time Micaiah uh, says anything about Ahab, he says bad things. He doesn't say, he doesn't prophesy anything good because he's not bought like the 400 other prophets. He's not uh, bought. He's sold out for the God of Israel. He's sold out for the true God. And, and so he is in a position to where he um, can communicate the actual reality of what the God of Israel is communicating. So, uh, so, so the prophet, so the 400 prophets, they say, oh, go up to Remeth Gilead. You're going to win. You and Jehoshaphat, you're going to win. The Syrian army has nothing on you guys. You're going to win. And so what happens is the Micaiah, he is, as he's being, um, summoned as he's being uh, brought to the the presence of the kings, Jehoshaphat and Ahab, he's being told, you know, one-on-one -on -one by this servant of the king that, hey, he's, to he's being told in advance, hey, um, I know who you are. Um, there are already 400 prophets that have spoken unanimously that that these two kings are going to go up to Remeth Gilead and they're going to actually win the warfare uh, for Remeth Gilead against the Syrians. So your words should be similar to theirs because they're 400, you're one. So there's no way that you're going to have anything, there's no way that you're going to have anything different to say because you should be in agreement with the majority. The majority rules. The majority wins. So he's being told this. Micaiah is being told this. So Micaiah, he entertains the idea. So he is brought before the two kings, Ahab and Jehoshaphat. And he communicates uh, to um, Ahab and Jehoshaphat uh, that they're going to win. He agrees. He agrees with the 400 prophets and what they had said. And Ahab 
interrupts. He 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 erupts in a level of of maybe anger or just frustration because he says, "Didn't I adjure you to always speak to me the truth?" When it comes to prophesying what the Lord is saying, why are you lying? He, he's saying that Micaiah, uh, Micaiah is lying because he never says anything good about King Ahab. So he must be lying because Ahab believes that he shouldn't have anything good to say about him because Say about him because nothing has changed as far as Ahab's lifestyle until now. So he, um, uh, so then let, let's read, let's read some, let's read some of this. Let's read some of this. Um, so let's look at verse um, 17. It says, uh, so this is um, Micaiah, right? So he says in verse 17, and, and he said, I saw all Israel scattered upon the hills as sheep that have not a shepherd. And the Lord said, these have no master. Let them return every man to his house in peace. And the king of Israel said unto Jehoshaphat, did not, uh, did not tell thee that he would prophesy no good concerning me but evil. And he said, hear thou therefore the word of the Lord. I saw the Lord sitting on his throne and all the host of heaven standing by him on his right hand and on his left. And the Lord said, who shall persuade Ahab that he may go up and fall at Remeth Gilead? And one said on this manner, and another said on that manner. And there came forth a spirit and stood before the Lord and said, I will persuade him. And the Lord said unto him, wherewith? And he said, I will go forth and I will be a lying spirit in the mouth of all his prophets. And he said, uh, thou shalt persuade him and, pre and prevail also. Go forth and do so. Um, now, therefore, behold. So this is Micaiah. Now, trans, uh, he's, uh, he just spoke communicated what he saw in the spirit prior to this encounter, prior to this uh, being placed in position before the uh, two kings. So now he transitions to communicate what he saw, the, the manifestation of what he saw in the spirit, what he was given uh, knowledge of in reference to the reality of this situation. So he says, now, therefore, behold, the Lord hath put a lying spirit in the mouth of all these thy prophets, and the Lord hath spoken evil concerning thee. Um, and it says, but Zedekiah, the son of uh, uh, Chenaniah, went near and smote Micaiah on the cheek and said, uh, which way went the spirit of the Lord from me to speak unto thee? And Micaiah said, behold, thou shalt see in that day when thou shalt go in an inner chamber to hide thyself. And the king of Israel said, uh, take Micaiah and carry him back unto Ammon, uh, the governor of the city, and to Joash, the king's son, and say, thus saith the king, put this fellow in a prison and feed him with bread of affliction and water of affliction until I come in peace. And Micaiah said, if thou return at all in peace, the Lord hath not spoken by me. And he said, hearken, O people, every one of you. And so, so this is what Ahab was talking about 
in reference to Micaiah, who would not speak anything good concerning Ahab because of Ahab's continual evil and, and the way he was causing northern Israel to sin before the sight of, of the Lord. The, the multitudes of prophets in reference to the 400 prophets. We know that there was also another encounter in reference to Elijah with these multitude of prophets on Mount Carmel. And God showed forth his glory, showed the reality of the fire that came and licked up the sacrifice to demonstrate that there was a God in Israel. The God of Israel was the God and the reality that that God was showing the reality of his uh, presence, of his acknowledgement of what the prophet had said. And so, so this is why we have to understand that there are specific things that we have to look for in reference to the word of the Lord that comes out of the prophet's mouth. There are people that are saying things over and over. There are people that are communicating things over and over. There are, there are people that are talking about things that bring forth the manifestation of what the future holds. So God is speaking through them because God has placed power in them because there needs to be prophets in the land. There needs to be authorities in the land. There needs to be uh, 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 people in the land, evangelists in the land. There needs to be pastors in the land. There needs to be um, uh, uh, miracle workers in the land. There needs to be these people in the land that are advancing the kingdom of God. And, and so the reality is God is doing this because God wants to ensure that the people are being reconciled to him. The people in uh, the Elijah and Mount Carmel situation, they all bowed. Uh, you know, on their faces. And they said, the Lord, he is the God, the Lord, uh, he is the God. And so they acknowledge the God of Elijah. They acknowledge the God that worked on behalf of the person, Elijah, who spoke the very things that would happen in advance. So we know that Elijah was a man of holiness. So, so we have to, in order to identify a true prophet, uh, we have to uh, identify the reality that their lifestyles are uh, practically close to perfect. Their lifestyles, you know, and, and, and it doesn't always have to uh, be that way, but there is the miraculous power of God that is following the servants of God. The servants of God have a, a sensitivity. We're not talking about those who uh, profit off of the miraculous in un unrighteous ways, those who have certain levels of power, but yet they um, do evil things, prophesy cars and clothes and uh, scholarships and movie deals. We're not talking about those false prophets. We're talking about the real prophets who are concerned with the condition of the people, who are telling the people to return to their first love, to return to the God of truth, the God of the Lord of armies, the Lord of hosts, to return to the ways of the Lord because they've gone off, they've gone a whoring, they've gone into idolatry, they've gone into to practicing the identity and the ways of the world, and they need to return to the God of truth. They know what they're doing is wrong, but they're still doing it. They, they know the way they're talking, the way they're acting, the way they're behaving is wrong, but they still do it because they don't have the power. They don't have the direction. They don't have the, the glory. They don't have levels of conviction that, 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 that the, but, but the prophets, the, the people of God, the, 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 the pastors who, uh, who are after God's own heart, these individuals are to, um, to aid by the spirit to impregnate levels of the glory in people so that they can become who God wants them to become. And so, 
God is raising up people with levels of this power, levels of his glory, causing people to return to the God of truth, the God of righteousness, Jesus Christ. And so, uh, so we see in this scenario, uh, Micaiah, he goes from this vision that he saw with angels that or with spirit beings that were uh, next to the God of glory on his left and on his right, entertaining God's plan to cause Ahab to fall. And so one has the right plan that excites the Lord, that, that is affirmed by the Lord. The Lord sends him and a Micaiah responds by saying that what's being communicated by all of these 400 prophets is a manifestation of the spirit that's going to bring forth the condemnation on Ahab. Ahab doesn't realize that he is on the radar. He's on God's radar. God is looking at him, looking at every move, looking at every decision, looking at everything he's doing, and he is uh, not operating in the fear of the Lord so that he can know to stop doing what he's doing. Stop acting the way he's acting. Stop allowing himself to perpetually sin because there is a setup to fall that is about to manifest. And so uh, he, you know, brushes it off. Sometimes we can do that. We can brush off people who are telling us exactly what God is communicating. And so that and, and so this is why people, even in this modern day, are shocked when things happen. Though there was someone around you that was warning you, that was telling you, hey, this is about to happen. Hey, this is about to happen. Hey, you better watch out. Hey, stay away from that. Hey, don't do this. Hey, be careful. Hey, don't allow yourself to entertain that. Hey, because if you do, you're, you're, you're going to see the wrath of the Lord. So the Lord's wrath comes about and looks in particular ways. It causes loss. It causes interruption. It causes the uh, suffering. It causes sickness. It causes uh, the confusion that we see in the world. It causes, you know, the the uh, um, you know the word of God says in this uh, current day, in this Antichrist day, that uh, that because crime sh will increase. Why? Because of the lack of righteous judgment in the land. So there's a lack of righteous judgment in the land that the prophets, that the uh, servants of God have to address. But it's going to be, but there's going to be a increase of unrighteous judgment, of not being able to decipher rightly between matters, which leads to an increase in crime, which then leads to an increase in the lack of love and coldness between people which leads to more of the continuation of the Antichrist movement that we are seeing in the world today. And so Jesus is the answer. Jesus is the answer. Uh, being born again, Jesus said, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. And it also says, except a, a man uh, or woman, for that matter, be born of the water, water baptism, and of the spirit spiritual baptism being given the Holy Spirit, the Holy Ghost, uh, the Spirit of God entering in and merging with your human spirit, uh, creating a platform of, of 
power to then transform your soul, your mind, your will, emotions, your personality into the Christ-like individual that God wants you to be. So God wants power to be available in the land. And he's giving that to select people to ensure that there's a progression in transformation in the land, in, throughout the world. So we see here that Ahab and Jehoshaphat are still going to go to war. Though uh, Micaiah says this revelation, they have, you know, they, they, they're... They're gambling 400 to one, 400 to one, you know, like Mount Carmel, you know, hundreds of prophets versus Elijah one, you know, or maybe in the land, it may be two, maybe three, maybe four, but you have a majority that seems to think that that is going to overwhelm, going to overrule, going to reflect a confirmation that is justified over the few. God is able to save by many or by few. God loves to ensure that at times... It takes for you to listen close to hear what the Lord is saying and then to take what you hear in reference to listening close and to match it with what is manifesting. And so people are ignor ignoring the connections because of the inner idolatry. They're ignoring the connections. They're ignoring the manifestation of what God is really doing. And so the false prophets are who are being paid attention to. But yet they are the vessels of destruction that the Lord has chose to bring forth the fall of Ahab. And so Micaiah is being treated bad, given bread of affliction, water of affliction until uh, Ahab returns from war. And Micaiah, Micaiah says, if you return from war, what I just said to you was a complete lie. He says, the Lord has not spoken by me. The Lord has not spoken by me if you return from war alive. And so God is communicating through Micaiah the reality of what he is doing to purge northern Israel from to begin the curse that is to manifest on the line of Ahab. You have uh, Ahab, uh, then of course you have his son Ahaziah, who's going to rise up after Ahab's death. He's going to die very quickly. Then you're going to have Jehoram, who's going to be killed uh, by Jehu. Um, and then, of course, you have the reestablishing of uh, some measure of righteousness through Joash, who is going to be the southern uh, king um, of Judah, southern king of Judah. And, uh, but of course, that happens after the killing of Athaliah. Uh, because Athaliah, of course, after her son uh, dies, because he is caught up with Jehu, um, he, uh, she doesn't want to um, stop reigning. So she kills all the seed royale. But of course, just a few years later, uh, six years later, seven years later, 
Um, you know, you, you have the raising up of Joash, Joash under the protection of Jehoiada, the high priest. And so, uh, you, so we're seeing that, you know, Athaliah, who is the daughter of Jezebel, you have Jehoram, the son, um, you, you, you have uh, Ahaziah, you know, all of these individuals, you know, Jezebel, Ahab, all of them have to go. All of them have to be taken away out of the sight of God because they are polluting the land. So God takes away the pollution of the land with the rising up of the healthy power that is dedicated to the will of God to bring forth the true holiness that God wants to see in the earth or else he has to smite the earth with a curse. He has to uh, regenerate. He has to, because he doesn't want to completely wipe them out. Uh, you know, he wants levels of mercy on the north, on the northern. He wants, um, you know, so he brings forth Jehu. Jehu um, is the king of the north for a while. And of course, because of his, uh, you know, uh, completing of the task, he has his four sons who reign with him or reign after him as a reward for his faithfulness. But of course, that northern Israel uh, doesn't ever really transform uh, from the levels of underlying corruption that they were entertaining. And so, uh, so ultimately, Ahab and Jehoshaphat go into battle. Uh, Jehoshaphat um, Ahab knows better. He doesn't dress as a king in battle. Um, he, he thinks he's going to get away. Uh, but Jeho Jehoshaphat, uh, who uh, does have, in a sense, kingly attire um, or, or armor or whatnot, he is sought after by certain enemies, uh, Syrian enemies. And uh, what happens is uh, he is in the position to to see the fact that he can lose his life. So he cries out to the God of Israel. He cries out to his God. His God saves him uh, the, the, through the, the pursuing enemy who turns around and sees that, hey, that's not Ahab. Because they were already warned to pursue Ahab to, because they, are, they don't even know that they're being used to uh, bring about the very uh, death of um, Ahab. And so what happens is they uh, uh, find him. They find him. They, even though he is in a disguise to um, avoid, you know, um, the, the, uh, tr to further have protection and avoid what could happen to his demise, he still is killed. There's a bow that's drawn. It hits him. It wounds him unto death. He then uh, is um, manifesting the very uh, reality of the prophecy that Micaiah Micaiah had communicated. And so, you know, and so, yeah, this is the reality. Uh, this is ultimately the bitter end of an unrighteousness and idolatry and pollution. This is uh, the bitter end. And, you know, when you see uh, yourself uh, having to go back to your land of nativity to uh, bury someone in a casket, you know, uh, what, why, why that could have been avoided. You know, you have to go back and now there's mourning and crying. Why? Uh, because of the pollution that God did not want there in the first place. And so there's a bitter end for that. Uh, it, but God wants to raise up people that know the difference between the holy and the profane. Know the difference between uh, the truth and a lie. 
No, the difference. And so we need the Spirit of God, and the Spirit of God is here to give us the right promptings, and we ought to see. And so many people, they're not afraid to prophesy and not see a result. Or they're not afraid to prophesy and see very little evidence. Of, of what God is doing. That's why God likes to do big things because he wants there to be no doubt. Mount Carmel, no doubt who is God. You know, with this war for Remeth Gilead, no doubt that Micaiah's prophecy manifested right there when uh, Ahab comes back to the land, you know, not alive. So, so, there, there is a reality of the, of the drawing of the people back to the first love that saved them. God saves people and he wants to make them people that are wholly given to them. God is aggressive at times in reference to fighting for your heart. He's fighting for the, 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 your, your life to reflect him. And so the enemy is fighting to bring forth more corruption and, and more lack of of. of of uh, truth and and honesty and and you know more just multitudes of corruption in your life but God is trying to show you that there is you know uh the righteous righteousness of God that he's trying to make a reality in your life you know there's a way that seems right unto men but the end of those ways are the ways of death and so God is trying to show us that he loves us he really really loves us and he wants to prepare you he wants to uh, it, uh um, ensure that you know in advance what is his will what versus what's not his will. He, he, he loves you with an everlasting love. He loves you. He drawn you by his love and kindness. He is ever protecting you. Angels are all around you, guarding you, protecting you. He is doing things to ensure that he makes you into what you were ordained to be. But we must be people who are honest in reference to what righteousness is. When we venture off into unrighteousness, we must tell ourselves, no, I can't do that. No, I can't do this. Well, no, that's not right. No, sometimes you have to stand up for the will of the Lord. You have to stand up for truth. You have to stand up for what God said to be a reality in your life. Because if you're just going to, uh, you know, cower, cower at the possible tribulation you could face for standing up for righteousness, then you're going to be ultimately a slave to the unrighteousness that you don't want to address. And so, it's going to bother you more and more and more. And it's sad because it, there's going to be a hopelessness that sets in. But God is the God of hope. God is the God of truth. God is the God of love. We, we have uh, hope in these earthen vessels. We, the, the Bible tells us that uh, in 1 Corinthians 13, that we ought to be men and women of charity, of faith, of hope. Uh, the greatest of these is charity. And so God is desiring that people return through righteousness, through the spirit of God, through the power of the Lord to ensure that they are living the identity that God has ordained that they lived. We don't have to um, uh, uh, cower. We don't have to. Sometimes you have to um, you know, some people, they, they think that, uh, you know, if I just stay in the middle, I'll be okay. But sometimes if you don't say anything, if you don't do anything, you're consenting 
to unrighteousness. And so you, you have to make a decision. You know, you have to choose this day whom you will serve. Because God wants your heart. He, he wants you not to give your heart to others. Don't give your heart to someone over God. Your heart is precious and it's for God. God wants your heart because he's molding it into something special that will be the, the very core of what he is pleased with. See, you, you may be in a wheelchair, but if your heart is pure and right before God, you are perfect. Though you can't walk, though you can't talk, though you're, you don't have arms, though you don't have hair, though you don't, you know, though you have some sort of handicap, though you have, you know, certain inabilities to do this or do that, or I don't sing well, or I don't do this well, or I don't, I, I don't walk well, I don't do this well, I don't, God is not concerned with certain, certain types of inabilities. God wants your heart to be for him. And there's going to be actions in your life that determine whether your heart is for him. And so God wants you to stand up with his power, with, uh, with, through his identity to manifest the heart of righteousness, the heart of purity. Uh, you know, blessed are those who are pure in heart, for they shall see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for, that, for they shall be called the children of God. God wants us not to follow after the character, characteristics of Ahab, but to understand there are Micaiahs in the land, there are uh, 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 Jehoshaphats in the land, there are uh, uh, Elijahs in the land, there, 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 there are individuals that are walking in these characteristics. John the Baptist in the land, there are people that are uh, uh, like Apostle Paul's in the land. There are people who are walking in uh, uh, characteristics, Priscilla and Aquila in the land. There are people that are manifesting the attitude and the grace of, you know, uh, uh, Noah in the land. You know, you have people that are uh, 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 Daniel in the land. You have people that are Nehemiah in the land, Ezra in the land. Uh, you have people that are manifesting the characteristics, the loyalty, the righteousness, the love, the faith, the hope, the truth that God is looking for. God is looking for a people that are sold out for him. I will not do wickedness for anything. I will not. And, and if, I, if I did, I repent of that and I choose righteousness. I don't choose idolatry. I don't choose respecter of persons. I don't choose hatred. I don't choose unforgiveness. I don't choose uh, the uh, entertainment industry. I don't choose the the uh, the actors and actresses of this world. I don't choose the rappers. I don't choose um, the the pop stars. I don't I don't choose the 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 uh, the perversion. I don't choose the Beyonces. I don't choose the uh, um, the the uh, satanic worshiping Rihannas. I don't choose them. I choose God. I choose Jesus Christ. I choose the ways of the Lord. And the, the, God tells us that if we stand on him, we are standing on a solid rock. We are standing on firm foundation. And God wants us to be people that stand on him, that understand that we are houses that are being built on the solid rock, and we are going to see the joy of the Lord. In, uh, well done, my good and faithful servant, enter into the joy of the Lord. God wants levels of perpetual righteousness to be 
ever blossoming in you that makes you more and more and more like Jesus, more and more holy, more and more loving, more and more full of faith, more and more uh, committed to advancing the will of God in truth. That's important, in truth. Not in dishonesty, not in hidden things of unrighteousness. No, in truth, in sincerity, in conviction of holiness and righteousness. And, and, and so it's only a matter of time until the Lord proves it. I'm telling you, he's going to prove it through you. He wants you to put down the distractions of the world and to put on the armor of God, to put on the, the truth that God is uh, making available by his spirit before the people. And so God is doing special things, great things. And he wants you to know that he has not left you nor forsaken you. He's uh, preparing this path for you. He's preparing this way for you. He's ensuring that you are walking this path, this path of holiness, this path of righteousness. He is the... Um, the lamp, um, um, lamp unto my feet, the light unto my path. You know, he wants you to know, you know, and, and if, even if you have to suffer, even if you have, you know, as we were talking about some affliction or some, you know, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, some level of abnormality, whatever it may be, you know, many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivers us out of them all. God wants you to know about the depths of his love for you. The depths of his love. His love is glorious, is great. His love is a love that we only know certain aspects of. God's love is amazing. For God so loved his creation, for, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. So God wants you to bathe in his love, to bathe in his truth, to bathe in faith, to, to trust him no matter what it looks like. Because God's, God's uh, maturing faith in you is going to cause you to reap great treasure. There's great faith in you that's going to produce great fruit that God is going to reward you for in heaven. God's going to reward you for even on earth. There's levels, uh, you know, it's not just, you know, store up your treasures in heaven. There are some treasures on earth. There's some, yeah, there's, there's some things that God's going to do on earth. He doesn't want your focus to be on earth. But there's some, there's some things that you're going to get on earth. But there's going to be far greater things, far vastly glorious things that you get when you enter into heavenly places. I love that scripture that says, Blessed be the God and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ who blesses us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ Jesus, in Christ. Beautiful. God bless you. And as I always say, feet follows focus. So focus on the Lord Jesus Christ and your feet, my feet, our feet will follow in the mighty name of Jesus. Much love.